Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, this is going to be triple series number four. Um, I had a comment on um, one of the last videos on YouTube from Kevin Casey, and he had a bunch of really good questions um, that he wanted answered. So I figured I would do another video um, just to kind of continue things. So he had a bunch of questions uh, with regards to the triple engines, and uh, the first one was if he tears it down. Can you reuse the pistons if they look good? Just basically wipe them off and and throw them back in. I guess technically, yes. If it's a sort of a low, I would say if you've done a rebuild um, and you're just doing a, just removing the top end and removing the cylinders just to check things out, um, that's pretty common. People do do that, but um, if it's an unknown quantity, you're buying the motor you've never you don't know the history or whatever, I would say uh, in the grand scheme of things, if you're tearing it down, pistons are pretty cheap. Uh, and I wouldn't chance throwing an older set in, um, especially if you, you know, if you see some blow by evidence of blow by or scoring or anything like that. Um, I don't think it's really worth it. You've done all that work. And I think you should just change the pistons if, if you don't know. Um, if you're going to throw them back in, at least I would get a micrometer and, um, a piston bore gauge and start making sure that, you know, nothing's out of round and the piston skirts aren't, and the, um, yeah, sorry, the piston skirts aren't starting to collapse depending on the mileage. And, but honestly, I, I think just get a new set of pistons and rings. Um, I mean, it's certainly not going to hurt anything. Uh, that leads into the. Uh, next point is uh, which pistons, SPI or like a cast piston, or do you go with a forged Weisco? And I would, unless you're building a like built up race motor, running more advanced timing and all this other stuff, I wouldn't bother with forged pistons. They, if you don't do the other legwork required to run them, which is ensuring that they're clearanced properly, and if you're getting a new set of Weiss goes and you have to clearance them to fit your stock bores, you're going to end up having to uh, essentially hone out or hone off the Nicosil and then get it, essentially get it re Nicosil replated and then honed out to the proper clearance. Um, just because the forge requires more clearance because the essentially thermal rigidity of them or the um, thermal stability of that metal Forged metal isn't as good as cast. Yeah, they're stronger and can take more stress, but lots of people use SPI pistons in their race engines without any issue. And I've used SPI pistons in my rebuild that I did and ran it for three years, no problems whatsoever. And I've used SPIs in a few engine rebuilds. And honestly, I've mic'd them out and they're machined perfectly. I've never had a problem with them. I've never had an issue with the, with the wrist pins that come with them, with the circlips that come with them, nothing. So they're a really good piston as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, like they're not expensive and they seem to last and they pretty much, um, you know, you can use stock clearance specs so you can basically throw them in a rebuild without really having to do too much leg work at all. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, just make sure your ring end gap is okay. And, and, you know, is to spec and usually they are out of the box, but it's just good to, to double check that, um, and use the procedure that's in the manual to do that. Uh, cause you don't want them too tight. A little bit too loose is fine, but you don't want that ring end gap too tight cause that can cause problems for you. Um, the, uh, the other question was like, how do I orient the rings on the piston so that it doesn't catch a port or they don't spin around? And, you know, it's like, you don't have to worry about that. The, the piston, if you look at the top of the piston, there'll be an arrow and that arrow points to the exhaust side. So when you put that piston in, you're, you're always going to face that arrow towards the exhaust side of the motor. Then there's two piston locating pins, one on the upper upper ring land and one on the lower ring land. And when you put your rings on, the ring end gap is going to um, essentially be on each side of that pin. And that pin's gonna hold that ring from spinning. So it's pretty 
like I don't say brainless because I mean you can screw it up by putting the rings in upside down. Uh, some pistons, depending on the engine, there's a top side to the ring and a bottom side, so you have to make sure the rings are not upside down. And some have even a top ring and a bottom ring. But if you just read the documentation that comes to your piston, it'll it'll tell you. And usually on the ring itself, it's stamped top, um, top or bottom, or uh, the top ones just stamped top, and the other ones just blank. Um, and trapezoidal rings, you'll, I believe the formulas do have trapezoidal rings if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but you can only put them in one way. If you put them in upside down, they just get stuck and they don't move. Uh, when you put the rings in properly, they should pretty much like when you, even when you squeeze them and close the gap, they should, or close the ring gap, they should move around fairly easily. Um, so very easy to tell if you've got them in wrong. Um, but just read the documentation that comes with the piston kit that you buy and uh, and just follow that double check everything and uh, yeah you should be fine the next yeah so just to sum up i would just go with spi pistons i would not bother with weiss goes uh unless you know what you're doing there's nothing wrong with weiss goes they just take more leg work and more prep and more measuring and um and you know they need to warm up i warm up my engine anyway until the coolant temperature starts to go up i don't even touch the throttle until until that happens so i'm very very like strict with my warm-ups which is good um yeah so spi is 100 fine they're super affordable um which is what i'm saying you should just go ahead and change your pistons anyway um it's honestly not hard to do and not expensive your next question was the nicosil uh can or should you hone that um honestly if you're putting new pistons and rings in um when I say hone Nicosil, you're not actually honing it like 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 that word, basically like what that word means to a machinist. Uh, you're not honing them. All you're doing is deglazing. So you're breaking the old, essentially, um, glaze off of them from, you know, the previous set of pistons and rings. So I don't like using ball hones. Uh, you can catch a port and chip those pretty easily. I like using the the honing stones that are the um, uh, either three or four uh, long ones on the spring. I can't remember what the heck you call them. Some call them spider hones that you put on the end of a drill and just work it up and down and make sure that it's soaked in oil or WD-40 or some other type of lubricant. Um, it's not meant to like like put a new cross hatching in there. It's just meant to break and clean up the glaze. Another thing you can do if you're feeling up to it is to hand hone. And I do this with um, engines as well. And uh, I haven't had any problems with it. It's literally taking 420 grit sandpaper or better yet emery cloth um, and putting lubricant on them. And then essentially um, in a round pattern. So if this is your cylinder right here, sorry for that, right there, you'd basically be doing a round pattern like this. And you just move around the edge of the cylinder and then you'd have to go and do the bottom the same way as well because you can't get full depth when you're in there. Um, essentially count how many times you do it. You're not, you're not gonna take any material off, but all you wanna do is just clean it up so that the, the new rings that you put in are gonna actually you know, wear in and uh, seal really well when you're breaking in. So, so yeah, I'm, I wouldn't use a ball hone. Some people swear by them. I just don't. Um, there's a lot of opinions on that. But yes, you do need to deglaze them. I mean, and I think the hand honing is just fine. Um, like I said, you're not going to put anything out of round and it's not nuts. You're just basically trying to clean it up. That's That's it. Um, and it's good, like after you hand hone, to check your Nicosil and make sure you don't have any pits or chips out of it. Because um, if you do, you, you'll need a replate uh, for sure. So, uh, and your last question was uh, about greasing the cylinder bolts uh, and head bolts. So, uh, yes, you do want to do this. Uh, do not put them in dry. It's you don't have to blob it on there, but the reason. Uh, the reason that you grease them is to get the proper torque. So all you do is you make sure that you're in your base and in your in the top of your cylinders, your head, um, for your head bolts. You just make sure that the holes 
that the threads are nice and clean in the holes. So either with um, brake cleaner or whatever, just make sure they're cleaned out um, and cleaned out really well and even put some like pipe cleaner in there and just make sure that they're really, really clean. Same with the bolts. Make sure that your bolts are nice and clean and the threads are clean and there's no guck on them. And then all you need to do is take some of this Molly Coat 111. Um, so just take some Molly Coat and uh, put a little bit on your finger and just put a little bit on the threads. You don't have to goop it on or nothing. And all that does is just you know, so the threads don't catch and, or anything like that. It just gives you the correct torque value when you're, when you're torquing it on the pipe dope. You don't have to do pipe dope or anything like that. Basically on your head bolts, what you want to do is under the top of the flange on the top of the head bolt, you want to put some Molly coat, like a dab of Molly coat on the bottom so that when it starts to, uh, touch the head, it'll spread that Molly coat around and seal it because yes, you do, um, it, they are poking into the coolant jacket, uh, into the head. So, so, uh, yeah, that's what you want to do. It's, uh, just essentially, it looks like you've been reading the shop manual. So do what the shop manual says. Um, I do that for the motors I've rebuilt. I've never had a problem. I tend to go, um, if you're going to do your base gasket, it's good to use some type of gasket dressing just to ensure that you're going to get a good seal on there. I, um, use it all the time. Now I don't bother just putting a dry gasket or even a WD 40 on the gasket. I just use gasket dressing both sides and put it on there and torque things down, um, in stages. And I've never had an issue, um, especially on the triple motors at all. And it's just good insurance and it doesn't hurt anything at all. Um, yeah, and it's just, just good insurance and it actually helps the gasket integrity, the strength of it, um, over time. So yeah, I really like anaerobic gasket maker or, uh, yeah, from Permatex or, you know, Loctite, uh, works really, really well. So gasket dressing, excellent, excellent stuff to use. Uh, and if you're also just another tip for you, if you're going to be tearing down your, your engine anyway, all the O-rings in the head and the, um, and the cylinders. So the, the O-rings that fit right in the top around the cylinder bore and the outer coolant jacket, make sure that you change those. Uh, don't just reuse them. Um, because yeah, you're just asking for trouble if you do that. And if you can, while I've had no issues with aftermarket, like, um, Windorosa or any, any other aftermarket companies, um, O-rings and seals, I've had no problem. Uh, the, the BRP OEM ones are slightly better quality and, um, uh, especially for the, uh, inner, inner one in the, um, combustion chamber there. So, so I would try to find some OEM ones. They are expensive, but you know, I mean, it's good insurance and, uh, you don't want to skimp, uh, on a, on a part like that. Cause that's pretty critical. Um, yeah, if there's, Anything else, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to answer any more of your questions. Um, like I said, some of this stuff is like due to my, due to the experience that I've had rebuilding, uh, rebuilding these motors and some of it's just preference. So, you know, especially about the honing and about the pistons, uh, honestly, um, yeah, I, I don't really use Weisco. I just think they're not worth it, um, for a trail a trail motor. If I was building a race engine, maybe I'd sing a different tune, um, in that application, but just for trail motor, I've never had a problem with SPI. And I think that they build a piston every bit as good as the, as the OEM one for like way less money. Um, and you can't even find these OEM pistons anymore. They don't make them. So, so yeah. Uh, and while you have the engine torn down, you should also just check your, uh, Check your crank phasing, make sure that your crank isn't spun. So uh, put a degree wheel on where your PTO side is. Um, and then just make sure that uh, mark every 120 degrees with a protractor, try to get as accurate as you can, and then lift each rod up to the highest and make sure that they're all 120 degrees apart as you lift them up. So they should each be 120 degrees apart, um, at which is essentially top dead center. If one's really off, then you know you've got a spun crank or or had some type of problem on the bottom end. 
Um, so while you've got the engine torn down, do as much as you can to uh, just make sure that that you know you have good bottom end integrity. And a lot of these checks are also in the in the shop manual for um, for the triples. So. Yeah, anything else, let me know. Um, happy to answer any questions and pass on any knowledge I have before I forget everything that I've learned. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great day and uh, hope that uh, summer is going to be looking good for you.